after my Breaking the Depression video. I got quite a few comments on it. I just wanted to say, as I said in that video, typically I'm not someone who has a melancholy attitude a lot of the time, but I'm still human. As upbeat as I am, I still have those times where I wonder what is the point of all of it? Why, why is it that I have all of these things that need to be done and yet they go undone? To make my part of the world a little bit better place. Cleaning up the branches in the yard, putting away the old pots, building a chicken coop that actually works, that's not falling down and in disrepair. I know that there are many out there that suffer from depression. And I don't want this to be a downer. I don't want this to be something that, oh, look, everyone's depressed, because I don't think that's true. I also believe that even though we're joyful and we're happy, sometimes we can just get down. Sometimes we can just get to that point where riding the bike is something that is reserved for a happier day, a sunny day. After my breaking the depression ride, I did feel good. It's not something that lasts. It is something that you have to keep doing. You have to keep repeating the process. But the more you repeat the process, the better you feel, generally. Now, I'm not a physician. I'm not a psychiatrist. I am not a professional. Do not rely on this video for help. So am I always upbeat and happy? No. Do I generally have the kind of personality that is upbeat and happy? Yes, I generally am. So I just wanted you to know that I'm not depressed. I'm not suffering from depression. I was just down a little bit. And one of my, one of my healing ways to break a funk for me is to get out and ride, is to get out and do some exercises, to get out and clean up the yard or do some yard work or, or, or whatever. I know how to deal with some of the things for my personal being. You may be entirely different. You may be someone that has to deal with this in a completely different way. You might have to go get help. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with asking for help. Here's the one thing that I tell people all the time. When we find out about something, you usually find out about people needing help after the situation has somehow resolved itself. We don't know how to help you if you don't tell us. Because we're going about our own lives, we're taking care of our own families, we're taking care of the cars that are breaking down, the bikes that are breaking down, we're signing up for bike rides, we're taking trips, we're doing fun things. And we don't know necessarily that you're hurting because you put on a really good face. Those of us on the outside, that don't think that somebody else needs help is because it doesn't look like they need help. But if you do need help, ask. That's the one thing. You never can tell. And other people can't tell. So if you need help, ask. Okay, so it's the next day, and I'm gonna take a trip over to my church and talk to someone who has dealt with this professionally and personally. All right, so we're gonna go build up some good endorphins for the first little bit because we're gonna ride over there. Newbridge Baptist Church for um, almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years in November. In that time as a minister, I'm assuming you've had some sort of training. Mm -hmm. I see licenses and certificates on yeah. your wall. So I'm assuming that with your training has come some sort of general counseling. You're obviously not a psychiatrist. You're, you're a pastor. Right. One of the things that has come up on my channel is 
is I posted a video not too long ago about breaking the depression, mm -hmm. getting out and riding, and that kind of gets the endorphins going and okay. kind of helps break that, I don't know, kind of the funk that you get in sometimes. So I was just wondering if maybe you could give some insight on your experiences and stuff like that. Sure, I'd be glad to do that. Let me give a little background. Yeah, I have been through some some clinical training through my time in seminary, but that's also been 32 to 34 years ago with that. And um, I'm not a clinically trained psychologist or psychiatrist. I'm not a clinically trained counselor, though I've had counseling classes. And uh, I do counsel people, but I also understand my limitation with this. And um, this is one of those things that anybody who is a counselor or anybody that you go to as a counselor that hopefully that person understands where their limitations and their abilities are and referral is a great thing. A referral just means that I'm going to put you in, in contact with somebody who can help you more. And so I, I understand those boundaries. And a couple of things that you had, had mentioned there, um, you know, my background, I did study for uh, three and a half years in a master's program and then also another three and a half years in a doctoral program. My doctoral program really didn't cover this area. It's an entirely different field, but some of my, mas some of my master's studies um, covered counseling and dealing with issues like this. And through the years, I've, I've had to counsel people and done the research myself. But part of that is just because so many people are affected by this. And, and you used the term, uh, used the, the, made the statement that you feel down, that sometimes you feel down. I think one of the things that people need to understand when we're talking about depression in particular is that there's a significant difference between the between feeling depressed and having depression. Uh, most everybody will feel down at some point in time. I mean, we just, even the most um, outgoing, the most upbeat person, there are going to be times when they feel down. They are going to have some melancholy set in, you know, have an emotional high and then you have a let down. You may feel down for a period of time, for a couple of days. But when we start talking about depression, uh, when you look at most of the research, National Institutes of Mental Health, American Psychiatrist Association, they would say that depression is something that lasts for um, two, three weeks to a lifetime. It can last literally for a lifetime. And there are different reasons why people suffer from depression instead of just feeling depressed. Um, somebody who is depressed, they're dealing with some stressors in life that have pushed them into this position. And um, it may be that they are genetically predisposed to this and they've suffered through this for years and this is kind of the norm. This is what they deal with every day. Others, because they deal with a job loss, because they deal with health issues, because they deal with um, the stress of a failed relationship, that stress actually changes the, the chemical makeup within a person's body. And over a prolonged period of time, it can put a person into a depressed state. They suffer from depression. So there's a big difference between feeling down and dealing with depression, and I think that's one of the things that a lot of people don't fully grasp. Um, depression, depression, not just feeling depressed or feeling down, but depression itself affects one out of every four women. At some point in their life, one out of every four women will be affected by depression. One, of, one out of every six men will suffer from depression. And, and some newer studies have shown that that number is probably actually higher. The, the, the difference between those two is probably not one out of four and one out of six. It just goes unrecorded in men a lot more than it does in women. And um, why, why do you think that is? Why do you think that, that is it just because, is it the machismo thing that men don't want to I think it's a male psyche thing. Anything. Yeah, we 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 have been taught over the years. We have been trained from childhood as as boys to internalize our feelings and work through this. Um, well, it's not bleeding. Get up and go. Um, you know, don't don't talk about our feelings. And so we're we don't really discuss those things a whole lot. But in general, people don't deal with this very well. That's that's why um, we have a mental health awareness 
month, which is the month of May, in particular, Mental Health Awareness Week is May 13th through the 19th this year, just to bring awareness to this specific issue, this specific topic of mental health, um, because so many people are affected by this. At this time, uh, about 13% of our nation suffer, suffers from depression. That's the best guess from National Institutes of Mental Health. And, um, you know, those statistics are online. You can look them up. Just type in mental health, and it'll take you to several different websites that talk about this particular topic. Um, when when you, you talk about feeling down, there is a correlation. And, and medically shown, there is a correlation between exercise and being able to scatter some of those down feelings. That's why when you mentioned going out for a ride to chase away the depression, well, it, it literally can chase away the depressive tendencies, the feeling down attitude that a lot of people have because the body releases serotonin, releases endorphins. When you exercise, that releases that and it can combat many of those feelings within that a person is, is dealing with. Um, for depression, you can't really treat depression with exercise. Uh, when, when somebody exercises, it makes you feel better, but somebody who's suffering from depression, there's a chemical imbalance inside. And, and I'll, I'll confess that um, this is one of those things that I've had to learn through experience. My family's been touched by this. and. We make no secret about this. This is part of our journey and, and why we've learned more about this. Um, after my oldest daughter was born, um, my wife suffered from postpartum depression and um, she suffered with it for uh, a period of time. We went to a counselor. The counselor recognized right away that she was suffering from that. We learned through our own research um, some of the details associated with this. If you read a lot of the Christian articles that are out there, or books that are written, they kind of treat this as a spiritual condition. Well, you just need to pray through this. If you just study more, if you just worship more, if you're just in church more. But for people who are suffering from depression, those things may help, they can change, but that's kind of like saying to the diabetic who is dealing with a chemical imbalance in their body. You know, if you just go to church more, your body would make more insulin, and it doesn't work that way. Um, for somebody who's suffering from depression, it may require some medication, which is just a chemical that um, helps regulate what the body is not making at that point in time. It may be for a season, it may be that they are genetically predisposed to this and it may last um, you know, a lifetime that they struggle with. My wife Ann, uh, she struggled with this for 18 years. And um, she has, um, she's not taken antidepressants for a number of years, but we would not hesitate if, if I saw some of those signs. She and I have this trust relationship where if I see those, I'll tell her. And together, we'll will get the help that she needs for that just like she would do if I had a medical condition. And so um, the spiritual aspect is important, but so is the medical aspect. And um, the best treatment for depression is antidepressants and counseling hand in hand. And counseling is really just a conversation. Counseling is a conversation either with a trained counselor or somebody even maybe who isn't a trained counselor, but somebody who can help walk you through some of those feelings that often we internalize. Um, this is why it's so, so insidious because depression pushes people, one, to be inactive, two, it pushes them away from others when the two things that, that can help in the process, in addition to um, medication, are talking with people and exercising. And so those two things along with medication make a huge difference. And I will also say this, this is one of the things that we've learned through the years too. There are a lot of people who go to their family doctor, their family practitioner, or their gynecologist, or you know, they'll prescribe antidepressants because they pick up on the fact that a person's depressed. 
I personally tell people, um, if there's something related to depression, I, I'm not going, I may start with my family doctor, but I will end up with a psychiatrist. I'm not going to let my family doctor treat me for a heart issue. I, I'm going to a cardiologist. I'm not going to let my family practitioner, as much as I respect her and as great as she is, she is not going to treat me for cancer. I'm going to an oncologist. I, I'm going to somebody who is, specializes in that field. This is why it's critical for those who are dealing with depression. If their family doctor notices that and they want to put them on medication, if it were me, I would tell my family member, ask your, your family practitioner, ask your family doctor for a referral to a psychiatrist. That psychiatrist is the one who's trained in the field dealing with medications regulates the medications best and uh, I think that's where people ought to start you know like for me I'm a pretty upbeat person how do you know for someone like me at what point should I be should I be going to a doctor at what point should I be coming to see you at yeah. what part should I be going to you know depending on who you are you know going to see a priest or you know somebody in the religious community at, at what point at what point does it say okay mm -hmm. I'm I'm feeling down for more than, you know, 64 hours now. I, I should go talk to somebody. Yeah. I mean, is that something, do you think, that is maybe, um, uh, I guess, more personal? I guess you kind of know yourself or what? No, actually, uh, a lot of people don't know themselves, and that's where a lot of the issue is that you know, for many people who have suffered from depression, this, this isn't uh, an immediate onset. I wake up and oh I don't feel the same way that I did yesterday um, maybe there's something wrong I'll wait a day or two or a week and see if I feel better it, it becomes just a normal pattern of life and people dealing with this ongoing depression which I should mention there are different different types of depression or different um, aspects associated with depression that show in different ways. Um, my wife struggled with um, what we think was dysthymia, which is a lower grade depression, but it's this constant ongoing feeling all the time. Um, and, and a lot of people don't even recognize that. So um, I would say that if, if you have people around you that you trust, that know you personally, that know you as an individual, and they see some changes, and they say, I think it, you know, maybe we ought to talk with somebody. Talk with somebody. And I'm not talking about talking with somebody who may not have any training in that area. Um, if I'm not feeling good, I'm, I'm not going to go to my buddy and say, well, I'm, I'm not coming to you, <laughs> Jim, and say, I don't feel good. What do you think? Do, you, do, you, do I feel like I've got a fever? Do you think this could be a thyroid problem? I'm going to somebody who's trained in that. And that's one of the critical things is to go to somebody who is trained in that area. It was amazing when we were dealing with this, and I was naive, young and dumb, um, really didn't know a whole lot of what was happening there with with my wife um, but we walked into a counselor who's trained and within the first five minutes ten minutes of this first counseling session she just looked and said honey you're dealing with depression I can see it all over you and I can hear it in everything that you're saying and I would have never known that uh, Anne would have never known that it's not something that we would have self-diagnosed. This counselor who's trained in that area was able to see that in us. And so for anybody who is dealing with that over a period of time or they can't get out of this, this funk, it's time to talk to somebody. That's the first step. It's time to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing in a specific area. So in my case, when I'm just kind of feeling down. I know generally speaking, I have a personality that I'm, pretty much nothing bothers me. Um, but I've noticed that, like I said in my previous video, I just kind of was feeling down for a few days and I knew, you know, and that's a major thing, I knew going out and exercising would make me <laughs> feel better. Yeah. Um, the, there are people that 
Mm. Maybe we'll find sometimes that one instance of something, you know, maybe a parent dying or a spouse or, right. you know, some of those big things. And that's when you really should go well, find some help, yeah? That, that's a, a more acute situation, yes. Yeah. And so in that kind of circumstance, yes, people absolutely should be aware of this. Or people around that person should be aware because often in the middle of that circumstance, people are going to be like, oh, I'll be fine. Just give me a few days. Oh, I'll be fine. Um, but those who surround them need to be keeping an eye on, on them for those significant changes. That's kind of the flood. You know, the, the overwhelming thing right. that happens. The, the big catastrophic yeah. thing happens. Okay. So there's, there's the catastrophic flood, but there's also the slow trickle and erosion that takes Chinese place. Torture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, you know, that can happen over a period of time. It can happen as you age. Your body changes as you age, and chemical makeup changes as you age. Um, so, yeah, it can happen. It's not like the Myers-Briggs test where you take a personality test and that's your personality, supposedly, for the rest of your life. People who may have never suffered from depression before could suffer from depression now. It can be circumstances that can trigger that where it's not a real acute circumstance, the death of a spouse. It could be um, a job situation that is um, ongoing, stressful, daily issue over and over again that actually can be a slow progression into that. And it's, you know, it's something to be aware of as well. It's not necessarily the, the catastrophic event that always pushes somebody into a position of depression. It can be other things that trigger that too. You want to go to somebody who has some experience that is greater than mine to be able to give that perspective. At the end of the day, when people are going through all of these issues and they're thinking, oh, I, I might have this, or do I need to go talk to somebody, or whatever, what kind of steps do you think that, that maybe they should look at? Should they go and talk to their minister, or should they go to talk to their mom? What, where, I mean, what kind of, where would they start? I mean, I don't even, I don't even know where to start. You know, I kind of feel down sometimes, some days, and I don't even know where to start. What, what would I do? I would say start with um, one or two things in particular. First, ask people around you if they've noticed this change for an extended period of time. Uh, if it's you, you need to ask that question. People close to you. You know, have, have you seen this in me? Have you seen a change here? Is, is, tell me about it. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I'm, I, I need to know what's going on. You know, ask, ask the question. And this is kind of if you think it's that you, you already see it in yourself. Yeah. Um, if you think you see it in somebody else, then it's good to approach them and say, I love you, I care about you. Um, but I've seen some changes that are going on, and um, I'm not sure that that all these are are healthy for you long term. And because I care about you, I just want to say that um, it might be time to go to talk to the doctor about what you're dealing with, and find out at least see if maybe you're dealing with some depression. It may be that you're just feeling down, that y you are dealing with a three-day bummer. Getting out and doing some things like exercising, changing, changing the, the scenery, going for a walk, doing those things, that, that it, it really kind of helps bring you from that. It's probably not depression. Depression is a medical issue. Feeling down may not be a medical issue, but dealing with depression is. Talking with a doctor who knows about this. And then if you have a doctor who says, um, well, yeah, I think that sounds like depression. Here, let's write a prescription. Um, please ask your doctor for a referral. Um, it's not questioning their ability. As a general practitioner, they have to know so much about so many things. But 
talk with somebody who may be a little more specialized in the field. Going to a psychiatrist should not be a stigma. Going to a psychiatrist just means that you're smart enough to go to somebody who, in that particular field, knows what they're talking about more than anybody else. That's where I would go. I would talk with my doctor, and if they see those signs, they think it might be depression, ask for a referral. That's who you need to talk to. Well, thanks, Rob, for talking with me. Yeah. And um, hopefully... Well, thank you for asking. I mean, I, I noticed the post, and I, 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 uh, I saw the video, and um, yeah, there is a, a part there about being able to go out and ride, and that can chase away some of the down feelings. That's why people say, well, I didn't feel like it, but once I got out and started riding, I felt much better. Well, yeah, because your body produces those endorphins that really do bring about some of that mood change. Um, but if it's depression, that's only going to be a very temporary fix. Well, thanks for uh, talking to me about it, and hopefully uh, some of the people out there in, in the Internet world can, uh, can get something out of this. Yeah. Um, the main point being that neither Rob nor myself are yeah. trained counselors. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not either. Um, but I play one on the Internet. <laughs> so um, if, if, if you see that in you, go seek help. If you see it in somebody else, maybe you might want to be a friend of them and say, hey, have, have you thought about this? Have you noticed this in you? Um, Rob, thanks for taking the time to, to visit yeah, with me. Glad to and, do uh, If you need help, um, I'll try and find a number for something or somebody, I guess. I don't know. And maybe I'll put that in the link in the description yeah. below. Um, so if you need some help, start with, start with your pastor. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Start with your doctor, your general practitioner, and go talk to somebody. Like, like Rob suggested a while ago, go talk to, to somebody. And I'll, 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 I bet Rob will agree with me on this, is that um, sometimes people are really good at hiding it. <laughs> the other side of the, the equation is sometimes you have to show people your vulnerability a little bit, and you have to ask. Mm -hmm. So if you need help, ask. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Jim. next time. Cheers. <laughs>